Hello, I'm Louise Chappell, Professor in the Faculty of Arts at University of New South Wales. And today I'm delighted to introduce Prosecutor-Elect, uh, Mrs Fatou Bensouda of the International Criminal Court. Welcome to Sydney, um, Mrs Bensouda, and uh, congratulations on your recent election to the position of Prosecutor. So you're here in Sydney to participate in a conference, uh, Justice for All, which marks the 10th anniversary of the International Criminal Court. There's often a lot of confusion around um, the various institutions in The Hague and I'm just wondering if you could just explain a little bit about um, the role of the ICC, its mandate and uh, it, its key function. The difference with ICC and other ad hoc tribunals is that ICC is a treaty based organisation. Mm -hmm. um, it is permanent mm. and it has jurisdiction for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. And currently we have uh, 120 countries that have signed and ratified the Rome Statute uh, becoming members of the, of the ICC. And, uh, and Australia is one of those countries. And Australia so of course it's one, yes. of, one of those countries and also a very strong supporter of the ICC. Excellent. Could you just tell us uh, some of the steps that the Office of the Prosecutor has taken in its first 10 years to uh, advance and address uh, gender-based crimes? Gender-based crimes with, um, in the ad hoc tribunals, and here I mean the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, mm. as well as the International Criminal Tribunal for, the, uh, for Rwanda, um, and even the Special Court of Sierra Leone which, um, as you know, were all established uh, um, by the UN Security Council. They have made ground-breaking records with regard to the um, addressing sexual and gender-based crimes, especially in times of conflict. And it is largely on what has been done in those courts and tribunals that has paved the way for the sexual crimes and sexual uh, and gender crimes that are now found in the Rome Statute establishing the International Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. And at the um, uh, Office of the Prosecutor, we have tried over the years to ensure that these crimes, the crime of rape, sexual slavery, sexual en enslavement, forced pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, all of these crimes we have included in our body of charges in the cases that have so far um, uh, we have brought before the chambers. And we have our first case, which was the Lubanga case. Lubanga was not charged directly with sexual crimes. He was charged with enlisting, conscripting, and using children to, act, um, to participate in hostilities. What we have tried to do in that case, uh, as an office of the prosecutor, is also to show the gender dimension of of, of the crime of enlisting and conscripting children. It's been interesting recently in, in um, the Kenya situation uh, that for the first time the courts had to uh, address issues related to uh, gender-based violence against men. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is again another groundbreaking uh, area for the court. And I'm just wondering if you could make some comments about um, how, the, how you might see the court progressing um, these sorts of issues in, in future prosecutions? The main reason you will find, uh, uh, if you make a good assessment, is that it is being done to, to break the will you know, of, of society, to break the very fabric of society by humiliating these men. Sometimes these rapes or castrations or first circumcisions are done in the presence of their families you know, and, and, and their children and, and that is the main purpose. So in the Kenya case we, we tried to present to the judges also this, this kind of crimes. Um, it is unfortunate that the, the judges um, did not recognize them even though it is forced circumcision the judges did not recognize this as um, a sexual crime, but rather um, uh, another form of, form of crime against the person, the family as well as the community. Mm -hmm. 
So I, it is the plan of the Office of the Prosecutor that we will reassess also the way we present our evidence, if that is where the problem lies, or how we can present to the judges in such a way that um, it will be accepted that this crime is not just an ordinary crime, but it is a, it is a sexual crime that is aimed specifically at uh, um, humiliating, you know, breaking will. Um, it, have, it is intended to have a special, you know, effect on the person, the family, as well as the community. Do you feel that there's a, a, a special relationship between the Office of the Prosecutor and civil society? And is this something that you feel like you're wanting to develop and pursue throughout uh, your term as prosecutor? Um, civil society uh, has played a very big role in, in establishing the International Criminal Court. Um, sometimes in our situation countries, you find that it is the NGOs, civil society, who are on the ground and, and providing that extra support that perhaps the ICC is not able to. Um, so my intention and uh, the intention of the office uh, and my team is that we will continue, you know, to engage with civil society to see um, what are the best ways of contributing to our mandate. Mrs. Bensuda, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been a delight to have you in Sydney and uh, wonderful to have you speak with us. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for thank having you. me.